Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. It's time for Gold's Comeback. Let's explore. Yes, Gold is making quite a comeback, even though the, the title of this uh, article here from Market Watch seems to be a little misleading. Gold gains more than $80 an ounce to mark the largest daily dollar climb on record. But really, it's dating back to 1984, and it's pulled back since then, I guess from the time this article was written. But gold futures rallied on Monday, sending prices up more than $80 an ounce, or 5.6%. That marked the biggest daily dollar climb for the most active contract uh, based on records dating back to 1984 and the largest one-day percentage rise since March 2009, according to the Dow Jones market data. Weakness in the dollar, which dropped in the wake of the Federal Reserve's decision to purchase an unlimited amount of treasuries and securities to support the financial market, provided a boost for the precious metal. Yes, the Dow is, or the Fed is desperate. Uh, you know, Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve, they're doing, pulling out all the stops and more to uh, try to uh, kickstart this economy. But in reality, you know, if you think about it, if they would, could do this through legislation um, and make it a temporary measure here, um, I think that'd be a better move than just injecting all this liquidity in the markets like this. I think it's a, it's insane. And uh, not only that, but, uh, you know, on top of them dropping rates down a full point and another round of quantitative easing and setting uh, reserve restrictions or releasing reserve restrictions for these banks to hold especially uh, any amount of cash, any percentage amount of cash in their in their coffers there, but it is a uh, it is quite an interesting movements where we're we're seeing this here uh, that this rise in gold and with all of this stemming from the COVID nineteen outbreak, and we see here by the bulletin that even the United Kingdom have ordered most shops closed, no gatherings amid the outbreak here, and so where are we stand as of right now with gold and silver prices? Well, gold is recovering uh, very well here, uh, even aside, at least the real prices here. Maybe that was talking about futures, but in real dollars here right now in the markets, gold has climbed up $52. That's a 3.5% increase here to $1,552.50. Silver uh, is performing very well and is recovering too. Silver is up 13 uh, five over five percent now, a sixty-five cent increase. Still in underwater though, uh, below its um, averages that we've seen. Um, you know, sixteen, seventeen dollars is where we were at before, and it's still well below those levels. But uh, we'll see here. Silver though is sitting right at thirteen dollars and thirty-four cents, and platinum has gained as well, a solid gain here to six hundred forty-five dollars. Uh, for platinum per ounce. Palladium is the big winner of the day. It jumped up and 8.94%. Uh, Surprising, actually, in my view, to see it climb up now over $1,800 again. Um, why is this happening? Well, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's because, um, um, you know, palladium is kind of following some of these other precious metals, and, you know, with the dollar uh, losing the dollar index down. And I think there's metals are kind of sitting there and they're kind of moving up with the other metals. You know, I believe in moves like this when the dollar index is low, uh, the markets are moving up. I don't know that it's necessarily people buying a whole lot into the into the uh, taking opportunities, at least in the ETF world, but there could be some of that as well. Uh, but I believe that as we move on forward, we are going to see the precious metals continue to climb up. You know, gold is one of those metals that took a dip, uh, but it didn't get slammed like silver did. 
And I think that's why silver's been in demand. People are wanting to get it in the physical form. And the physical price of the metal, um, especially in the buying realm, that's what people are doing. They're wanting to buy it. Not as many people are wanting to sell it. But there are uh, dealers out there who are paying over spot, even for generic and for eagles and the like. Um, but there's also some incidences where that's not happening yet, and probably because not many people are selling. Uh, but nonetheless, I think as supplies get squeezed, you will probably start to see more dealers pay more for silver so that they can move it, even at small margins. And so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but I think it's going to take some time for that to to uh, establish itself. And it also depends on where spot price is going to be. Is it going to continue to rise as it is? Because silver has taken a pretty big jump upwards from its lows. Remember that silver was did dip into the high 11s for a while. And now it's sitting here uh, 1334, but it has a way to move upwards, at least in the paper price. We'll see what happens. I think as the price does go up, the spot price goes up. I believe that we are going to start to see some of these premiums come down in due course because um, some of the demand may subside a bit. But we'll see. I think also it just depends on what happens to the economy um, as we get unemployment numbers, which are coming, I think, Friday. I think that will give us the first real indication of how bad things are going to be. And it's going to be bad. Uh, the uh, the Surgeon General uh, put out a release yesterday or today about this particular pandemic here in the United States, and it's going to get a lot worse this week. And I think that is going to drive markets down. The market is down today, and I think that's another reason why uh, we are seeing gold and silver go up. So finally, we're starting to see the metals move in a normal fashion to situations like this. Um, and But really, is it finally? Could they come take a dip down below? You know, a deflation... Uh, some people say that in an economic downturn, there's deflation with an economic downturn, which could push metals lower. And uh, so we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. But as most people that are into the precious metals and accumulating them as a hedge, what's going to happen is they're gonna, there's going to be more demand for these metals, uh, which will push the price up. And um, people will start to move towards a safe haven of precious metals um, after they start to lose confidence in the in the dollar to cover their losses in the markets. And so we're phasing this out. You know, you can look at times in history and what has happened before, but there's other there's another aspect of this which is unprecedented, as we all know by now, uh, with essentially the economy in a freeze. Now, I will say this. Today, uh, there has been a lot of bickering in the Senate over this uh, relief package that is being or bailout but it's a bailout i believe that if there's going to do a, a bailout a relief package it should be targeted towards business um small and large but especially small business some of the larger businesses i think can absorb uh, some of the um, impact in fact some of them are in fact they're rewarding and hiring right now places like walmart they're, they're paying their employees more and they're they are hiring more employees, um, and uh, so it's opportunities for those of you who may be out of work right now, at least temporarily, you could um, you could possibly apply at Walmart if there's one near you here in the United States. But what's happening is there's partisan bickering, um, uh, especially with Democrat, Democrats trying to throw in uh, some of their special pet projects or special interest projects at the last minute, which is what tends to happen. Pork barrel, pork barrel um, type of uh, incentives out there to try to sneak in at the last minute. Thankfully, Mitch McConnell saw that and put a stop to it. We need to put politics aside and partisanship aside and focus on one thing at a time. Um, no, no matter where you agree on certain issues, um, you can have your opinions on that, but this is not the time to fight those battles. Um, this stuff needs to come out quickly and expeditiously to get to businesses. My feeling is, is they ought to put conditions on this money that it will go to pay their expenses for each of the businesses, not in the stocks, and to keep the payroll going for their employees, to keep the infrastructure of their businesses in place so that once this is over, they can just start right from where they left off. And there may be things that they can do to um, improve their businesses and, and ways to use their employees 
in, in, a, in a manner efficiently that if they can do so um, with social distancing and the like to be able to improve their businesses for the relaunch of the economy whenever that time comes. But we're finding more and more things are getting shut down for a lot longer now. School districts are literally in some parts of the country shut down to the end of the uh, rest of the school year, which means that, you know, essentially they're done for the year right now. And here it is, March. I think that's a little overdriven or over um, reacting, But uh, nonetheless, some of this stuff, Obviously, we've got to take into account and take advantage of these times of social distancing, but we need packages to go out to help uh, businesses so that they can stay in business so when the economy does come back, they can get ready to roll again. Uh, but that is not really known how long this is going to last, and the nervousness of the markets, never seen this before, and the hit that's going to take in the economy, I believe will raise precious metal prices. As to the dollar and its future, well, with all this money the Federal Reserve is printing right now, and coupled with that, this money being spent for these relief packages, that's going to be troubling for the debt and for the dollar, uh, and um, who knows. And I think this is why cases like this are why many of these nations are holding gold um, as a, that tier one asset that you've heard me talk about time and time again. Um, and more and more central banks around the world are accumulating gold. And I encourage you to as well, um, you know, certainly after provisions, of course, you know, but if you're, there's two ways to protect yourself. You protect yourself um, physically. Um, you protect yourself, um, you know, as far as that is concerned economically as well um, with having a, uh, some cash on hand, some cash in the bank some provisions on hand, protections on hand. But then the second way is is to protect your, your, your wealth, your spending power. And you do that by diversification into gold and, and silver too. I think silver though has been very volatile as of late and it's really a long-term hold. And uh, there's gonna be times like right now where if you look at the paper price, it's not preserving your wealth. If you go to sell silver and you're trying to sell it to somebody who's not going to give you but a certain percentage over a spot price, you're losing out until somebody can give you a, a substantial amount above spot price. But nonetheless, we'll see how it plays out. But that's where things are right now. The gold and silver are making a comeback. And, uh, and we'll see how it plays out. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.